Hey, welcome back to the channel. Sam here from High Life Campers. Now, this video is called Can You Register a VW Transporter Camper uh, as a Leisure Vehicle with the DVLA? And the short answer to that is yes, but mostly no. And if you hang around until the end of this video, I'm going to give you all the information that you need about uh, reclassifying a VW Transporter Camper uh, into a Leisure Vehicle. So make sure you hang around until the end. So I want to kick things off by saying there is virtually no benefit at all to reclassifying a VW camper into a leisure vehicle. Uh, and this is a topic that's talked about a lot on Facebook, it's talked about a lot in all the different forums, uh, and it's a question that we get asked about on a regular basis. But the chances of you getting a VW camper classified as a leisure vehicle by the DVLA is virtually nil. So first of all, what I want to do is share a survey that was conducted by a website called climbingvan.co.uk. And what they did in 2019-20 is send the DVLA a freedom of information request, asking them to provide all the data that they've got for the last 12 months on all the applications that they've received uh, from people asking if they could turn their VW camper or reclassify it uh, into a leisure vehicle. And I've got a really great visual graph that they created uh, to show the results of that survey. So what I'm gonna do now is just share that visual with you just so you can see uh, the amount of applications that were received and how many were actually accepted. So let's take a look. Okay, so you can see from this visual, this is uh, the DVLA applications uh, for reclassification between 2019 and 2020. And you'll see with the numbers along the bottom of the screen there, uh, how many applications were received during that time period, uh, how many applications were accepted and how many applications were rejected uh, and the chance of approval during that period. So this graph is showing May 2019 to December 2020 and as you can see from the 14,942 applications that the DVLA received during that time period, only 806 applications were accepted and there were 14,136 applications rejected. So this is a huge amount of rejections in comparison to the amount of applications that were accepted. And obviously during the COVID-19 lockdown uh, time period, there were virtually zero applications uh, approved. So this just gives you a really good idea about the likelihood of having a VW camper or a transporter uh, reclassified as a leisure vehicle being very, very slim. It's very, very unlikely that you are going to get uh, your application approved. And this is down to the fact that the DVLA have quite a strict list of criteria that they require in order for them to reclassify a van, a panel van, into a, a leisure vehicle. So what I want to do in a minute is just show you exactly what that criteria is and what the DVLA are telling us that they need in order to reclassify uh, a vehicle. But again, this survey really does uh, highlight how difficult it is uh, to reclassify a VW camper and it's virtually impossible to get reclassification as it stands but there is quite a bit of lobbying going on in the background to try and convince the DVLA to reduce uh, how strict their criteria is. So I think in the fairly near future there may be some of these rules kind of slightly relaxed and it may be a little bit easier to get uh, reclassification in the future but as it stands as you can see from this graphic it's very unlikely that you would be able to get uh, your VW camper reclassified into a leisure vehicle. Okay, so what I want to do now is just talk through the requirements that the DVLA actually require uh, when they get uh, an application and when they are looking at reclassifying a panel van camper uh, into a leisure vehicle. So let's just take a look now at the criteria. Okay, so this information has come directly from the DVLA official website uh, in 2023 uh, and it just runs through the external and the internal requirements that they need uh, in order to reclassify a van into a leisure vehicle. So first of all, I want to run through the external requirements and then uh, move on to the internal requirements. So according to the DVLA, uh, in order for a van to be classified as a camper or a leisure vehicle, it needs to have two or more windows on at least one side of the main body, not including the windows on the passenger or the driver doors. And the reason I put a tick next to that is because all of our conversions and most other conversion companies will fit two or more windows uh, on, on at least one side of uh, the camper. So that isn't a problem and that will check off uh, that part of the criteria. The second thing is you need to have a separate door which provides access to the living accommodation of the vehicle. So again all of our campers and most campers you see out there does have a separate door uh, which provides access to the living area which is the sliding door that opens. 
the third thing is an awning rail uh, which has to be attached to either side of the vehicle and again an awning rail is a really common uh, feature on on most campers we fit awning rails on our platinum package uh, and most of our customers uh, opt for an awning rail so again there's a tick next to that because that's easily achievable now the next criteria really is the reason why you will probably never get a vw camper uh, reclassified as it stands at the moment and the reason for that is that the dvla require a high top roof and that does not include a pop top roof and you've probably seen from some of your research that there are a few high top uh, transporters out there uh, which have a slightly higher roof uh, out of the factory. And that is really the only type of base van that they would consider uh, reclassifying into a camper. So if it's a camper with a pop top roof fitted, which is 99.9% .9 of campers out there, then that will not meet the criteria that the DVLA need uh, to reclassify that. So this is the biggest hurdle, the biggest problem, and this is why virtually all applications to reclassify uh, get rejected, and that's because of the roof uh, and it's not a high top. So you could opt to buy a high top uh, van, but that would make it really, really difficult to fit a pop top on top of a high roof. It would look ridiculous and it would also be far too high to actually park in garages and, and other places. So the roof is the major problem and that's what will stop you getting reclassification. And then lastly, from the external side of things, they say that all campers need to have motorhome style graphics on both sides of the vehicle. And the main reason that they have this criteria is because they want the, the police uh, and other law enforcement to be able to identify the vehicle and be able to tell by looking at the van uh, whether it's a camper or whether it's a commercial vehicle. So this is why they added in the motorhome style graphics on both sides of the vehicle so that it was really obvious that it was a camper rather than a commercial vehicle. But I believe that recently this is now not a requirement and you don't need to have graphics on the side of the vehicle uh, in order to get reclassification. But the high top roof requirement will stop you getting classification anyway. So I don't think you need to have those motorhome style graphics on both sides of the vehicle anymore, but that was a requirement up until quite recently. Okay, so moving on to the internal side of the van, they require uh, a camper to have seats and a table. So most conversions, including ours, always have seats and a table inside the living area. Um, they also require sleeping accommodation, which may be converted from the seats. So if you've got a rock and roll bed or a rib bed, then that ticks that box, that's absolutely fine. And then it also must have cooking facilities and storage facilities, which in most camper conversions, you do have cooking facilities, you have a double gas hob, uh, and you, of course you do have storage facilities. So from an internal perspective, most of those requirements are met virtually with all VW camper conversions. But the biggest reason that the DVLA won't reclassify a van into a camper is down to the roof issue. If you don't have a factory high roof van, then they will not reclassify as it stands at the moment. But this may be relaxed, it may change in the near future. But as it stands, these are the official requirements. Okay, so now we know exactly what the DVLA are looking for in terms of the criteria uh, for reclassification. What I want to do now is just kind of talk through some of the pros uh, of having leisure vehicle classification and really kind of debunk some of the myths that you've probably heard out there. Because there's loads of information out there on the internet and you've probably got a lot of conflicting advice and information from different uh, websites and different uh, maybe YouTubers and you're probably a little bit confused about what the actual reality is. And there is quite a bit of information out there that isn't really true and isn't accurate. So what I want to do is just talk through some of the benefits and then sort of talk about which ones are kind of reality and which ones are false. So let's take a look at the pros and I will talk through some of those myths as well. So I'm just going to quickly run through the pros to having leisure vehicle classification. And to be honest, most of these benefits that you've probably heard are actually myths and aren't actually true. So I'm just going to quickly run through these. So you may have heard from different sources that... Uh, having your van classified as a leisure vehicle is going to uh, reduce the amount of insurance that you pay. And this is what campervanlife.com have got on their website about this. So they say that generally leisure vehicles such as camper vans are cheaper to insure than panel vans. And that's because they generally have fewer claims. They do fewer miles uh, and are not used for commercial use, which just makes sense. Because as a camper van, you probably aren't going to be doing that many miles in it. You might only uh, do the odd weekend away. Uh, so therefore, the risk of having a crash or uh, making a claim is going to be highly reduced compared to uh, a guy driving a van every day. So that, that makes total sense. But in reality, if you use the right insurance company, and there are many insurance companies out there that specialize in camper van insurance, it's not going to make much difference at all in the cost of your premium. So they say here that typically it's 10 to 50% cheaper than van insurance. But again, if you have an insurance company that you use for your car, or you're going to set up a new policy specifically for your camper, you will find that the premiums are not that high, especially if you were over 40 years old and you have a good track record of driving. 
uh, and you use the right insurance company, it's not going to make much of an impact on insurance. So this really isn't uh, a major issue. And this also applies to contents insurance because vehicles registered as a camper generally have better contents insurance than panel vans. And that's because camper vans contain personal belongings such as mobile phones and laptops, whereas a panel van typically contains tools and parts for commercial use. So because you're only going to have a few clothes and a few personal items in a camper van, the insurance policy is probably going to be quite a bit lower uh, compared to uh, a guy that's driving around with really expensive uh, tools and equipment in the back of the van. So having leisure vehicle classification would bring the price of the contents insurance down a little bit, uh, just like it will with, uh, with road insurance. But again, the reality is if you tell your insurance company that it's a camper and you explain exactly how you're going to be using it, and typically the value of the belongings that you'll be uh, having in the van, it's not going to make a big difference to your policy if it's not classified as a camper. Um, and like I say, there are some really good insurance companies that specialize in this. Now, I do see some people talking about ferry prices and the fact that if you don't have uh, your camper classified as a leisure vehicle, it's going to increase the price of ferry prices. And that actually was the case, but I believe now that is not the case anymore. It doesn't cost any more to have a panel van on a ferry than it does a motorhome. It all depends on the actual size of the vehicle and the weight of the vehicle. It doesn't matter what the use case is for that van. So this really is a myth and it's not going to impact the amount of money you pay to uh, go on a ferry. It's got nothing to do with the use case. It's all to do with the size of the van and the weight of the van. So this is really not something that you need to worry about. And while we're on this topic, I'll just give you a couple of insurance companies that we recommend, uh, and they specialize in camper insurance. And a lot of our customers have used uh, these two companies to get really good policies and not pay huge premiums. So the first one is Adrian Flux. Uh, and the second one is a plan but most insurance companies that you use to insure your car will insure your camper van but it's really important that you tell the insurance company exactly what the value of the camper is uh, exactly how you're going to be using it and what the modifications are on the van so they will need to know exactly what the external modifications are they'll need to know if it's got uh, alloys on it whether it's been lowered uh, or any other external modifications on the bodywork but then you'll also need to tell them exactly what's inside the van, what uh, features you've got uh, inside the internal part of the van. So as long as you're completely transparent and you are upfront about uh, the value of the camper and exactly what internal and external modifications have been done, you will have no problems getting a policy and it shouldn't be too expensive providing uh, you are within a certain age bracket and you've got a good track record uh, of driving on the roads. So these are two really good insurance companies that we uh, highly recommend. Okay, so I really hope this video has been helpful to you. It is a topic that I've been meaning to uh, do a video on for quite a while because we do get asked about it uh, on a regular basis. And it is obviously something that you do need to consider when you are looking at buying a VW camper van. But really to summarise, there really is no benefit to uh, reclassifying a VW camper into a leisure vehicle. It isn't going to impact the daily usage of your camper. It doesn't mean you're going to have to pay out more money for insurance or even ferry crossings and things like that. So there is no real major benefit to it. And we've sold a lot of camper vans over the last couple of years and not one of our customers has had any problems getting insurance or any problems in actually using their, their camper on a daily basis. So this is not something that you need to really worry about or get stressed about when you are going through the process uh, of buying a VW camper. Okay, so if you are looking at getting a VW camper in the next few months on the build up to summer, then you may be a little bit confused about which route to go and whether to go and buy a completed camper van or whether to uh, buy a bog standard panel van and then take it to a conversion company for a conversion. Uh, and if so, you may have a lot of questions. So we are here to help you. So if you've got any questions or comments about anything that I've covered in this video, just put them below the video in the comments on YouTube. And if you'd like to have a conversation and talk about your particular situation uh, and you just want some advice, then you can reach out to us anytime and we can arrange a phone call. So if you go to our website, which is highlifecampers.co.uk, uh, go to the contact page, you can send us an email there, or you can use the live chat on our website and we'll get back to you straight away. And we've also got a couple of amazing completed VW campers available at the moment. So what I'll do is put a link uh, below this video on YouTube to uh, our available campers. And you can also find more information about our services on our website. And if you haven't already downloaded both of our guides, we've got our VW camper buyer's guide where we talk through the whole process of actually buying a VW camper. And we've also got our conversion spec guide where we basically give all the details of all three of our conversion packages and all the choices of colours and spec and extras that we offer uh, in our conversion packages. So I'll put links in the description below the, to both of those free guides. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, make sure you do that because I do share regular bite-sized information videos just like this one. And I also share regular walk-around videos of all the base vehicles we're getting in stock and also all the completed campers that are available. 
So make sure you subscribe. And if you've got value from this video and you've enjoyed the content, please also consider hitting that like button uh, so we can help YouTube go and find more people to help with our channel. And I will see you in the next video. Speak soon.